This is my buddy. I've had this about 30 years. Those that wait upon the Lord, so they renew their strength. They renew their strength. It means you get more every day. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Then I added my translation. Teach me, Lord, how to wait. Man, I've got a lot of arguments about that, but it's sure done a lot of great things for me. So you show you me what you believe in what you say? Because that's what I get from those folks. That's a bunch of saying. I'm about a bunch of doing. I understand it. I want to say that God, God, blesses the work of your hands. You're not doing it. He's just asking you to work. He's asking you to have a consciousness of him when you're working. He's not asking you to be a superstar. He's asking you to make him one. You understand? Do you understand the difference? One way is pride and the world, and the other way is epigenosis and the supernatural. But with that comes all the other blessings, the the joy, the peace. You don't have peace in your life. You got yourself backwards. You're running after something and you got the court ca cart in front of your horse. It's going to end up in the ditch because there's no steering. But God said, I will do that. I will do it. So what do you what do you do in the meantime? You're not waiting as in not doing nothing. You're waiting on the blessing to manifest. You see the waiting? Got it? That's the power. Because that's where most people stop. Is where most people quit because they ain't got something that they want. And they don't think this is God's interested. And they, that, that, then the devil comes in and convinces them that there's condemnation and all kinds of reasons why you're never going to get it. He'll remind you of all the things you do wrong, all the things that people around you are not making work. He'll remind you how bad this city is. He'll remind you how bad everything around you is. He'll, re, he'll remind you, you how you're going to get blessed here. How you going to get this done? How you going to make this happen? How you going to get that done? I'm just going to get up in the morning and put my hands to something because God blesses it. And he doesn't need you other than the work of your hands. I mean, he doesn't need you somehow in order to figure it out because if you're trying to get it figured out, you're always going to come up with a zero. And, he, and the devil, will gar I guarantee you, he will always give you a reason why it's not going to work. And then he'll get you convinced that it's time to quit and go do something else or run somewhere else or go do this or go do that and stop whatever it is you're doing, whatever it is you're believing for. One of the curses and the, one of the struggles that so many folks get into is someone else gets the benefit of your hard work because the silly things we do. Bankruptcies. Quit and go some other direction when you're just about ready to cross over. 
and you stop. Because let me tell you something. The time when the blessing is about to show up is the hardest time that you're ever going to experience. That's the way the whole system was built. In the way God wanted it. It's just the way it is. The fall. Because Adam and Eve was designed to have perfect faith. Never a doubt. Never a concern. Never anything. Just perfect faith. I mean, they walk with God. They talk with him. That's the way it's supposed to be. And when the fell came, a division happened. And they no longer had that connection until Jesus. Says that they... They shall not build and another inhabit. This is one of the blessings that God promised us. So in other words, you're not going to be in a place where you're going to be building something or doing something with your hands, and another person takes advantage of it, gets the benefit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. But you know it comes with not quitting, with favor, knowing you have the favor, knowing you're a son, knowing you're a child, not leaving home like the prodigal son with a bad attitude because you didn't get your own way. It didn't happen the way I thought it would happen. Well, I don't care how you thought it would happen. I've been trying to teach you guys. Quit worrying about trying to figure it out. Because if the fork in the road, if you're not there yet, you have no reason to make any other decision. You just keep going until a fork in the road. Then you got a decision. And here's the key. No matter which way you go, If you keep your heart right, even if you go the wrong way, he'll get you back on the path. He'll make a way where there is no way. I said it this way. God even blesses your mistakes. That's my way of saying it. It says here, 1 Peter 1, verse 7 and 8. These trials will show this trial is a mistake. The trial is an error. What you're believing is work, what you're believing is supposed to be working, you're not seeing it. So you see it as an error, a mistake. And then you begin to dig for why I made the mistake, what was the mistake. And the devil starts feeding you information. And it always goes to things like, well, you're not adequate. You're not good enough. You weren't nice to your wife. You didn't do this right. You didn't do that. You should, should have done this. You should have done that. And, and that's, that's the route that he takes once you run into that first trial. But my Bible says that trial is a mistake. But he said, I'm going to bless that. And he said it this way, thank God for the trial. Why? Let me read it out of the NLT. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. You guys think you you think you have the faith for that? I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be tested. It's going to look like a mistake. All the signs are going to be there. This ain't working. Well, if it's not working, then it's what? It's a mistake. And he says, 
it is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. When is he being revealed in this situation? When is the glory being revealed? When the manifestation gets here. That's the moment that you, that you look at it and you say, oh my gosh, and, and strength comes. But if you're doing your job right, when the manifestation gets there, it's not a big deal. Because in your heart, you're already believing that as if it were real. So when it comes, every major faith adventure I have walked in, when the answer came, it wasn't a big deal. Because I had already determined in my heart. I'd already been term determined through all the trials and all the struggles and all the things that looked like they were going to take me out. I'd already determined this thing is going to work. I'm just going to get up every day. And I'm going to go after it. I know I'm not adequate. I know I'm not capable. I know I don't have that training. I know I don't have that education. I know I don't have that ability. But God says, I really don't care about all that. That's the reason why most people don't follow me. They're all looking for that and we're waiting for it. Well, if I just get an education, if I just go get my degree, if I just go, you know, have a little money. I mean, I watched some, I watched some girl on TV the other day. She says, if I could just have some money, I could go to college. I need the government to give me money so I can go to college. That's not how I went. I just jumped out in the water and started stroking. I had no way of knowing how I was ever going to pay for it. And you don't save enough money to put your way through college pulling, pulling a lawnmower around town for two and a half bucks a, a, a one acre yard. Then you got to buy gas, you got to buy the wheels on the lawnmower. I used to pull that lawnmower around. Man, I had my bicycle, I was rocking and rolling around Delphus. Pulling that lawnmower, baby. I mean, I was making it happen. And then in the wintertime, I was the guy with the shovel in his hand, and I was shoveling everybody's snow. I was walking up and say, you need your snow shovel? How much? 50 cents. I'll take it. And some of them say, no. I said, bye. Most of the time, I wouldn't even say bye. I was just out of there. I didn't have time. I wasn't trying to be mean. I was just driven. I just, and I saved it, all of it. I even had to buy some of my own clothes when I was in high school. Family I grew up in, I got a pair of blue jeans, a pair of shoes, a couple pair of socks, two shirts. So I started my year. That's how I ended it. So if I want something else, I had to buy it. Do you see how our country is weak? Do you wonder why we got this thing going on in Washington? Because those people are all byproducts of all this giveaway and, and all this everything handed to them and grew up in families that were pretty well off, you know, and, and everything was given to them. They never had to earn nothing. So they didn't have any respect for it because they didn't earn it. You can't do that to your kids. You can't make them... you. Look, you can't make them respect it, but you can make them earn it. That will develop the respect. If you give it to them, you're messing them up. You know what? It's just like a little chicken trying to get through the egg. You see that little thing trying to get up through there? So you think, I'm just going to help him out a little bit. So you kind of help break the egg a little bit and try to break it out. And pretty soon he's born dead. Because he wasn't ready. You took control of something that was in God's hands. That was, that was God's. That wasn't your business. And you screwed it up. You do the same thing to your own children. If you don't make them earn every penny that they have because it develops respect.
There's a lot of other things too, like responsibility and you know, learning how to save, learning how to give. All kinds of things come, come off of you making your children responsible. I remember my kids coming to me. They were like seventh and eighth grade. Dad, we want to earn some money. I said, fine. I'll let you know what you can do. Oh. Well, that's the way it's always been. But you know, they think they're going to get this bonus or something, you know. No, you're not going to get a bonus. You're going to work for it. So I said, for every book that you read and turn in a good book report, don't try and don't you try and screw me up here, boys. I mean, don't you read the preface of that that book and, and try and do a book report, I don't know. Because that's what I used to do. <laughs> so you know. I said, I'll give you 25 bucks for every book you read and turn in the book report. See, there's always something that you can do. I wash dishes. My brother Mike and I wash dishes every day, five days a week. 25 cents a piece, supper time. So my dad wasn't able to give me much, but there are some great lessons that I learned by watching him. He was a hard worker. Didn't really follow this a lot, but he went to church every week. Sometimes twice a week. They just didn't know. They just didn't. Can you imagine what we have today that we didn't have 45, 55 years ago? I, I do my teachings on between 25 and 30 translations. It's all right there. I just, bam, I find what I want. Can read all of them. Just keep clicking down the verses. Can read all of them. Find a verse that I really like and, or a translation that I really like that's saying what I feel it's supposed to be saying. I'll go into the Greek. I'll go into the Hebrew. I'll study it. I'll look at it. I'll say, that's really what it says. Why is it saying this? Well, do you have confidence in King James cats in 1400? I don't. I read it. It's got the test of time. You know, it does. It has, it, it's, it's proven itself. Me, I'd like to read the Dead Sea Scrolls, but I wouldn't have a clue how to do it. So I do it this way. And I dig it out. What it says in the Dead Sea Scrolls. But I have to dig it out. See what I'm saying? And I have to dig it just like a hidden treasure. Yeah. Somebody tells you there's a hidden treasure in your backyard. Where's the shovel? <laughs> go out, go on out, and go on out in your backyard and start digging. How many holes are you going to dig before you find it? What's the answer? As many as it takes. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens in the meantime? You start doubting it, don't you? Is this crazy or what? Is this nuts? Well, I did when I drove by this property. The hidden treasure over here. And I just kept driving by it, you know, digging it. Every time I looked over at the sign, one day the sign's like this, the next day it's like this, the next day it's, like, the next day it's laying on the ground. And when I was laying on the ground, I just said, I'm just going to pursue it. Yeah, I had a lot of trials. No question. County engineer said I'm not allowed to develop it. That was exciting. So, God blesses even our mistakes. And, and it says here, uh, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Christ Jesus is revealed. 
You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with glorious inexpressible joy. Is that the attitude that you have when you're believing for something and it ain't showing up? And chances are it looks like it will never show up. You know why? Because you have you can have an idea in 35 seconds. You can have an idea that would make you billions. You know how long it takes to get it? You know how long it takes to work that idea? Are you willing to do that? That's like that treasure in the backyard. Do you really believe that thing has ability to produce? Success for you. Do you really believe that? It, it, it's just an idea. That's all. But God says, if you stay in my word, you will know the truth and the truth is such free. Free from what? From doubt and fear. That's what happens when you stay in the Word. Feel such free. This word for trial is the Greek word dokomian, D-O-K-I-M-E-E-O-N, dokomian. It is more accurately translated. Now, see, this is, this is the King James stuff, right? Trial, I've heard trial all my life. And we've heard it so much, we kind of like, kind of think we know what it is. But when I started studying it, I found out that's not really what it says. What's more importantly, it says this. It says, it is more accurately translated to proof. Thank God for the trial because it develops proof. It is a message of proving you to develop proof. You are proving that word in your life. And it is your trial, is your proof. It's the Greek, it's a, it's a word, a testing. You're being tested. What happens when you study and take a test? Do you pass? God says, I want you to pass, but you got to study to show yourself approved. So it's testing. By, implement, by implication, it means trustworthiness. Thank God for the trial because it develops trustworthiness in you to him. You learn how to trust him. You understand? You never look at a struggle in your life. Never look at a struggle in your life. Never look at a struggle in your life as a reason to quit. I hear so many folks, well, I guess God's telling me I should quit doing that and I should go do that. I say, well, where do you get that at? Well, I, you know, just isn't working. I said, well, does, is, is that what you use as your criteria? It isn't working. Would you be better to say it isn't working yet? Because we lean to our understanding. This is the way I understand it. Well, I know that's the way you understand it. But did you read what the Bible had to say? Because God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge. You know what acknowledge means? Act on his knowledge. That's all it means. That's how the Lord taught to me. I struggled with that word for five years. And one day I woke up in my den. I'm sitting there and I'm reading something. And all of a sudden, and I wasn't even reading that. 
I just one day he just spoke to me. He said, son, act on my knowledge. I just couldn't get my head wrapped around acknowledge. You know, to me, acknowledge is, you know, you're Mark McElroy, I acknowledge you. Well, okay, so how do I acknowledge God? I acknowledge you. You acknowledge him by acting on his knowledge, doing what he said. And you do it till you win. If nothing else, that hard spot you run into is nothing more than a Y in the road. Or maybe God just says, just put your shoulder down and keep going. I remember many, many, many years ago, I was talking to the Lord about something. And, you know, here I am, I'm sitting in my den. In 1975, I was fasting and praying and asking God for direction in my life. And I felt he told me. I thought he told me, I want you to build four houses the first year, starting in 1976, eight houses the second year, 18 houses the third year, and 25 houses the fourth year. You know what I did my fourth year? Huh? I got the or something like that. Nothing. Nothing. No. Not zero. Zero. That's what I did my fourth year. You know what year that was? 1980. Do you know what was going on in Lima? Nothing. We went from 55,000 people to 26,000. Well, I can say, well, I didn't know that four years ago. Well, wait a minute. Did you hear from God? You're a deceiver and a liar, Doyle. You told me that you're going to build 25. You didn't build 25, so I'm not going to listen to you. You have no credibility with me. God didn't do what you told me he, he told you. So how do I have any confidence in you that you heard from God? Now, I'd never had any man come to me and look me in the face and tell me that. But I heard it in my heart. Did you hear what I'm saying? Did you hear what I'm saying? I heard it from my enemy. And in my mind, it's happening all around me. Everybody that knows me. That's what I was hearing in my mind. What are you doing with your life? I'm thinking, I, I, I thought I committed my heart to you, Lord, and, and, and it just all fell apart. He said, is that what you believe? I didn't build another house till 1984, four years. You know what I did? I prayed. I read the Bible. You know what you want to do? You want to tell God, you know, just forget it. I'm out. I'm done. I'm done with it. I don't want to screw with it anymore. Nothing seems to work. Everything I've tried to do, everything I thought I heard from God, nothing, nothing's happening. This is 1986. There's a lot of other things happening in there, but here is 1986. What year did I start? 1976. See, God don't care about what you go through because he can get you to a place that's so far beyond your peers because I was not beyond my peers. My peers were on top of me. Everybody I knew, they were, you know, working at Ford plant and all this other stuff. I had a chance to work at the Ford plant in 1998. This is 86. Or I did work at the Ford plant. I'm sorry, not 98, 1968. This is 18 years later. Well, heck, by that time, I would have been running the plant. So I seen it. They were going to let me do something that nobody's ever done in the Ford Motor Company. They said, we're going to make you a, super, a supervisor. 
I said, well, I don't have no college education. I said, I thought that was first criteria. They said, we're making an exception. Detroit told us we can't. And I told them no. I took my lawnmower money, and I went back to college. And I started all over again because Moody Bible Institute I had nothing to transfer. You think I didn't have a problem with that? The devil telling me, well, you just wasted your time. You didn't learn nothing there. That was a waste of time. You took all your money you've earned and you threw it away and threw it in a hole. But see, God was trying to teach me something. He was trying to teach me what's most important for you is that you learn to, to keep getting up and lifting those weights. Just keep getting up and lifting the weights. Read that word. Study it. I need a giant. And you don't get to be a giant looking at the weights. Yes, sir, by golly. <laughs> I'm getting stronger every day. Look at that wagon. I picked that. I, I'm, I'm picking it up in my mind. Getting stronger every day. Not going to happen. You got to be out in. Got to be out in the war. Got to be out in it. Got to be a warrior. If you're not, you just be a Christian that goes to heaven someday. But that wasn't me. So I kept going, and I kept at it. And one day, ten years later, God gave me an idea. You know what the devil says? Well, why do you think that idea is going to work when none of the rest of them did? The only answer I had was, I believe. And I'm going to get back up. And I've got, I've had all these trials, and God has made me stronger. That was faith. That wasn't the reality. Not in the natural. That's what my faith said. I'm stronger. I'm a better man. Why? Because in all my ways, I acknowledged him. I acted on his knowledge, not mine. If I acted on mine, I would have quit a long time ago, and I'd been out of here. Nineteen eighty-six came, and my life started to change for the first time. For a long, long time. I graduated from college in 73. I was 23. And now I'm 38, 37. And my life started to change. I got into a little deal, and it worked. I got into another little deal, and it worked. And the Lord said to me, you know what the interest rates were in Lyman in 1986? I sold one house at this interest rate. Twenty one percent. I sold a house in Sherwood Park. You guys know where that is? I sold a house there. Somehow or another, God gave me the grace to scrape together enough money to work a deal with the bank. And I was buying lots for $5,000 a piece. I have no idea where I got the money. I just know I built a house on a lot that I owned, and the lot house was paid for. Have no idea how I did that. But you know where I learned it? In my trials, when everything around me was sinking sand and everything around me looked impossible and everything around me looked like I'm absolutely going the wrong direction as hard as I know how to go. When everything around me says all these are is a bunch of words on a freaking page. I had nothing to sink my teeth into except failure and loss. But I didn't see it that way because I never looked back. 
You know why? Because the Bible says, don't look back like a dog returns to his vomit. Proverbs. You look back and you contemplate that, you're just like a dog going back and eating his own vomit. I didn't say that. God did. So I didn't look back. I had every reason to not do it. I had every reason to fail. I had every reason to give up. I had every reason to quit. And I said, I am moving forward. And I somehow or another made it work. And I don't know how. I just can tell you, I ended up having enough money to put a billboard on Cable Road with the company's name on it right in front of the entrance. And all of a sudden, I got that house built. Everything looked like it's not going to work. And I had my first open house, and people started pouring in. Nineteen eighty-six from nineteen seventy-three. Never made it. Never made enough money. I didn't make enough money to buy food for my kids. So how would I get it? I don't have any idea. I just know all my friends. They're prospering and they're going places and they're doing things. Now some of those friends are bankrupt. They never learned nothing. They never learned anything because they were always looking for the easy dollar. Something easy, chasing after easy. And when a little money come along, they were stupid with it and foolish with it. They threw it away. And they never, they, they never did anything with it. They got rid of it all. Jeremiah says, 25, 14, in the New King James, it says, For many nations and great kings shall be served by them also, and I will repay them according to their deeds and according to the work of their own hands. This is God's way. You think maybe Congress could maybe come up with a little thought like that? Maybe they need to have me come and talk to them. See, we don't need Democrat and Republican. We need somebody, we need men with wisdom. Not knowledge. Lord knows they got more knowledge than Carter's got pills. They got more knowledge than oxygen cells in the air out there. All got their degrees from Harvard and Yippity Doo Da and Zemadam Ding Dong and all the other universities, and they got more knowledge than they know what to do with, but they're killing themselves with it, and they're now they're hurting a country with it. Because they have no wisdom. They want to make it Democrat and Republican or black and white or Mexican. They want to make it this, sickness or not sickness or health or vaccine or uh, everything is about something that has nothing to do with anything. What a great world of frustration. For a guy like me that watches this craziness, and it's like, do they have any wisdom at all? They lie, they cheat, they connive, and it ain't just one party either. It's just politicians that have gotten themselves so far out and so far away from, if you want to be great in God's kingdom... Learn to be the servant of all. There you go, boys. Something to chew on. There ain't no greatness in Washington. Term limits. There's a thing going around right now, term limits. The congressman in uh, Texas, he's pushing it. 
They just want to be lifers in there because they make so much money off the off all, all the pork belly projects and and they'll go in poor and they come out rich. You know, I, I heard a I heard a story not too many long ago. You guys aren't gonna like this. There was a gentleman, grew up on a farm in Ohio, rather rather mild conservative type of farm, nothing big, nothing big deal. But he got old enough and he went to one of the military academies for college. He graduated from the military academy, government, got his degree, went into the astronaut training, government. So he now he's an astronaut, becomes an astronaut for several years, government, and then he became a congressman, government. Then he became a senator, government. Now he's like 75 years old, and he wants to run for Congress again. He's dead, by the way. I'm, I'm talking about a story. So now he's 75 years old, and he wants to run for Congress. They have to, they have to give how much money they make and what their assets are. They have to provide financial documents. Do you know what he was worth? Now, he's never worked for anybody but the government. He's worth $40 million. This is almost 10 years ago. I may be the only guy on the planet that's seen it, but when I heard that, I said, that's just my brain. It's the way my brain works. You guys understand that? I don't just hear that. I I dissect it and go down to the foundation of it, and I work it all the way up through. That's how my brain works. I just had talks with my guys in here. I said, see, I don't hear what you guys are saying here. I'm hearing down here because I want to see how it plays out from the foundation. And I heard that, and I'm going, everybody else said, man, and he, 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 he's done well. I mean, we ought to vote him back in. He's a great guy. He's just, he's just a wonderful person. You're worth $40 million and you never work for anybody but the government? That's probably small by pork belly projects. I could tell you some stories. I'll curl your hair, but I'm, I'm, I'm cutting that off. Okay. We know in Deuteronomy 28, and that's, it, it, it's there where it talks about the blessings. And it says, and the Lord will open to you his good treasures. This is 28, 12 through 14. The heavens to give the rain to your land in, in its season when it's supposed to. And to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Now, there's not sin to borrow, so don't get there. You may end up in sin from borrowing, but it's not sin to borrow. But that's not God's best. I've been in both places. And it's not a sin to borrow. But when I got into borrowing, even after I had learned how to, to not borrow, I started going down a, a pathway that I shouldn't have been going down. And when I was building this condo project, I borrowed money to put the streets in, to build the lake, to put the storm water, the sewer, the streets, pay all the permits, and then I built 15 units. I was $3.5 million in debt. Now to have that kind of debt, you have to have some assets, you do understand. I was $3.5 million in debt, and I couldn't sell the first house.
You know what happened? Something real exciting. It was 1997. And I did some real stupid things. And I lost $1.7 million in the stock market. That all happened at the same time. I didn't have the money. I had some. Do you think I know what I'm talking about here? What do you reckon the devil was saying to me? <laughs> Who would ever trust you with anything? Who would ever be a blessing to you? Well, that's the dumbest thing anybody could ever do. No, you're going to lose everything you got. You're going to lose your family. You're going to lose your farms. You're going to lose everything you got. Everything's going to fall right, falling apart. Everything's going to turn to worms. It all made sense. It all made sense. But you know what I learned how to do? What is the first thing I told you guys tonight? Wait. You learn to wait. What else? Trust. You got to put your hands on something. You know what he asked me to do? Now, I had infrastructure for Cape Cods, 15 of them. And I had infrastructure for 35 of them. I got 20, I got 20 of them that's just got the sewer and the water to it. It's all designed. He said, I want you to design a ranch house and build a ranch. Uh, is there somebody else up there who want to talk to me? You want me to do what? I spent four or five months design. I, I, guys, I did not only have to design a ranch house, I had to figure out where to put them. And then I had to figure out how to get the sewer and water and storm to them because they were all somewhere else. And I got streets in. So what did I do? I trusted. I put my hands to it. And then I, what was the other one I taught you tonight? I acknowledged him in all my ways. And I said, all I know is you're going to bless the work of my hands. And everything that I look at says that's the dumbest thing you could ever say. You're more than an idiot. You're, you're an idiot going to seed. You really think God told you that? You know what? I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't have all, no other plan. I just went to my office upstairs and I sat in there and for day after day after day, I did exactly what he said. And everything, I, I had no track record in him blessing me in this thing. Am I just going to add to the problem? What if, I, what if I built this? Well, anyways, I designed three ranch houses together. I scraped up enough money of my own. I started to build them. I'm sitting on 15. Do you guys have any idea what it's like to drive in my office here and drive back there and see that? Do you have any idea? No, you don't. You don't. No idea. But you're going to. If you're going to get to where God wants you. Because let me tell you something. Most of you didn't grow up right. Most of you grew up with the wrong way of thinking. Most of you are bullheaded. You're stubborn. Why do you think those trials are for? Because he says, I want you to be humble. How are you going to get humble? Well, bless God, I'm humble. 
I've had, I've had people tell me that. I, mean, I did a teaching on humility. He said, well, I'm a humble man. I said, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> you know what humble means? Huh? You know what humble means? Die to yourself. And what's the answer to that? What's the equal sign? Acknowledge. If you die to yourself, you will acknowledge him in all his ways. If you die to yourself. If you trust what he said. And that's how I did it. I said, I am throwing myself at the mercy of God. And I'm going to have to finish this next week. But I'm throwing myself at the mercy of God. Because I'm putting myself in a situation that could destroy me. A lot of other things there. But I started building that three unit. When I got the first one done, sold. Not till then, when I got done. That's four more months after you hear it from God to think, maybe. Bam, second one sold. Bam, third one sold. Bam, four more people come. Built three across the street. Bam, 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 bam. Remember I told you I was in debt and 2003 became a miracle time for me? You know, I know you guys are going to get it. It ain't there yet. Maybe on a small scale, you're working some things. But I mean, I want you to get something that's earth shattering. That's mind blowing. That the world will look at you and say, man, there's something to that man. There's something in him. I got people say that. A lot of criticism too. But I have people say that. You know? But I don't care about either one because I don't want any pride and I'm not going to have any quit. Both of them are going the wrong way. If they brag on you, you get prideful. And if you look at your circumstances, you quit. I don't want to quit in me and I don't want to pride in me. I don't want either one. You understand? That's acknowledge him in all your ways. That's what that means. That's how it works. Well, we know from Deuteronomy and this is what God said in verse 14. I'm going to skip a little bit here. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day. I'm talking to you guys. I'm God's representative, and I'm talking to you just like he would. You will not turn aside from any of the words which I have commanded you this day. That's how you're going to get this thing that you ain't got yet. It's in there, but you got to get it out. I can't get it out. I can tell you about me. I can give you wisdom and knowledge and understanding, but you got to get it out. It's got to come out of you. Holy Spirit's in you. You got to get it out. It's called epigenosis. How many times have I talked to you guys about that word? Super knowledge. He said, don't turn to the right. I'm talking to you. And don't turn to the left. Get your eyes off your friends. Get your eyes off your circumstances. 
Get your eyes off all the foo-foo and all the worldly stuff. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I want to have this, and I want to have that, and I got to have this, and I got to have that, and I want this. And if I, 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 I remember a very, very, very close friend of mine saying to me, I said, why do you keep buying those Cadillacs? She said, I want people to think I'm somebody. I said, oh my gosh. He's not going to last. And he didn't. Everything he has gone. Died a pauper. You want pride? You guys want a little pride? Got to have the latest and greatest of everything? Help yourself to it. I have a little bit of that. I don't have Donald Trump's or Bill Gates, but I have a little bit of that, but not much. But mine came out of my surplus. When I did it, I didn't even know I did it. You ever take a bucket of water out to the lake and just take a big bucket of water out? Did you notice the lake dropped down? <laughs> Didn't notice the lake dropped down. I just came from the ocean down in Naples, Florida. I spent a whole week in a $4 million condominium built right on the ocean in the, one of the richest cities in the United States. And the man that owned it? 38 years old. Sent my brother a text. He said, I'm inviting you and your brother to come up here to Tampa and join me for dinner. We had a little debate about it. Next morning, we sent a text. He said, we'll do it. He said, I will be sending my driver up to see you at 1 o'clock on Thursday. Now, you understand? You don't have your head wrapped around this thing I'm doing. And God's got me enjoying this. There's just a little blessing he just kind of pulled out of the hat and said, here, have some fun with it. Enjoy it. It was free. I didn't pay anything. So now he's got us coming up there. Guess what he does? He picks me up in a $375,000 Bentley with a driver. So my brother and I sitting in the back seat, we're laughing and having a good time with the driver, and we drive for two and a half hours in a Bentley, brand new SUV, 270, 375. You say, man, would you like to have one of them? No. It was kind of fun to enjoy it. My kids razz me all the time. My kids have all enjoyed some really nice cars. I think they've all owned a BMW. My one just bought a brand new Tesla SUV for his wife. He just bought himself a brand new BMW M8. Does anybody know what that is? Look it up. And hang on to your belt, make it sure it's tight, because you lose your pants. Find out what it costs. Paid cash for it all. And he took that bucket, went out to the lake, sticked it up. <laughs> Didn't budge the lake at all. We're set, sitting in a restaurant in Toledo Saturday. State senator came in. Came over to the table. Hi, how you doing, Mr. Doyle? Not me, my son. And he said, but this is my father. And he's taught me everything I know. Do you guys have any idea what this hour and a half is doing for you? Do you have any idea what it can do for you? You don't, do you? You don't have a freaking clue. But if you keep at it, 
you're going to learn. It's going to come to pass. I'm telling you the things I'm doing. This is world-class stuff I'm doing. So I'm in this condo down there. $375,000 vehicle getting chauffeured to this guy's house. In an island, you have to cross a bridge in Tampa to go out into the ocean on an island. You bought a house up there. Had a great talk with him. Great kid. And I'm going to tell you something. He never went to college. His dad was in the tool and die business. You ever heard of a company called Finley Industries in Finley, Ohio? They had seven plants. And his dad ran those plants for the owners, but made very well. But then he started his own business, and it started flourishing. And he went to work for his dad when he was 19 years old. And he was faithful, and he stayed with it. I was able to really minister to this kid. Some of you might get a meeting. Because I found out what I was there for. I have 750 acres in Finley and I sold most of it. So I kept 150 and I want to develop it. Mr. Doyle, would you be interested? I said, I'm good at it. <laughs> you want to get in that kind of life? You're going to have to walk the way I'm talking. I'm telling you, if you listen, you might pass a lot of the years I spent. But I had to do that. Because somebody had to come up with the wisdom of it. And now I'm teaching it. You ever heard anybody on YouTube teaching this? They talk about the church and all this stuff and all you know. And that's nothing wrong with that. I'm not condemning it. It just isn't this. This is different. I got some other things I could tell. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about right now. Some great, really neat things. But back to Tampa. Went out to eat with him. And he said, you boys are not buying anything. Told my brother, now we're 70 and he's 38. And he buys this crab leg plate. He got like eight different crabs. Didn't even know there was such a thing. And they got these big crab legs, you know. This thing's this big. I mean, the table was, you know, bigger than that. And he said, uh, told the waiter, he said, bring me a bottle of doop 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 Because you guys like wine, right? And he said, yeah, I drink a little wine. $300 bottle. We go up to see his plant. He's got a plant. He's opening up a plant in downtown Tampa. It's a satellite thing to run his business that he's running. Because he sold his dad's business for $1.190 million. And it's just 20 years ago, it was just getting started. So I had a long talk with him about the principles and what, he, what he's doing. Now, he's made some big mistakes. One of them is he left the wife as youth when he sold the business. And I said, you know, if you, you would listen to me, I could teach you how to win at everything. All you're doing is winning at money. Do you think I'm offended by this guy? Do you think I'm intimidated? And that same spirit I'm trying to get in you guys. There's nothing impossible. Do you believe that? I've been through some stuff that in my own little world, it was impossible. Yeah, maybe to Donald Trump it wasn't impossible at all. I don't know. 
and you hear a lot of negative about Trump. You hear negative about a lot of these guys. But you know what? I don't care. I don't, I don't talk against them. I don't, I don't like some of the things they say. I don't like Bill Gates and his non godly attitude. He says, you know, they ask him one day, they said, do you believe in God? He says, no, but I'm going to develop a chip someday. He's going to figure him out. You know what I think he is? I think he's a candidate to get born again. And then realize where he got it. Because you know what his judgment's going to be on Judgment Day? You know, Bill, you used all my talents and all my gifts and you used all my principles to get what you got. Do you think you ought to go to heaven? Well, yeah, I've been good. He said, but your righteousness is filthy rags, Bill. Why didn't you give me the glory for what you got? Well, I thought I was when I was, you know, manipulating the vaccine. Or Lord knows what else he thinks he's doing right because he has an ungodly mind. So he's going to do things that he, the world says is okay. And so he thinks it's okay. But he's going to stand before God someday unless he changes. And he's going to have to give an answer for this blessing that God gave him as a result of using God's principles and God's rules and God's laws to his benefit. And he never gave God any glory for it. That's going to be his judgment day. That makes heaven and hell. That makes all those McDonald's and all those big fancy restaurants and all that wonderful stuff you did flying around your jet, not going to have that in hell. You know what you got down there? You ever burn your finger? Makes your whole body hurt. That's going to be over your whole body. And, you, and it won't be able to die. Or burn. So that's why I'm talking to this kid. So he throws us in a brand new $450,000 Rolls Royce. And he takes us downtown. He wants to show us his operations he's starting. Smart kid. But you know what? If you don't have God, you got, something's going to fall. You have all that money. He's already lost his wife of his youth. He's dating a 25-year-old. Nice kid, but that's not God's plan. So he threw us back in the Bentley and off to Naples we went after we spent that whole evening with him. But I believe, I believe we're all going to be involved with this kind of thing, being able to talk to the wealthy. Because God needs somebody to do that. There's nothing wrong with the other ministries. They deal with the masses, you know, and most of the people are not what I'm teaching. I love them. They're wonderful people. All that wonderful singing and stuff. It's all wonderful because I can worship the real God that I know. And I'm sure he is. He's worshiping him in his own way and his own understanding. And that's a wonderful thing. But when I worship the Lord, I have flashes of all the things he's done for me. And it's like, whoa. And when I'm praising the Lord, I'm saying, man. <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, thanks for that. Oh, yeah, thanks for doing it. Yeah, thank, oh, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> thanks for that. Oh, yeah, thanks for that. Oh, my gosh, thanks for that over there. Huh. That's what he means in all things give thanks. Little things, big things. And if you're faithful in the little things, He's going to make you ruder over much. Little by little. And if you think you're going to get it fast and quick, you're barking up the wrong tree because there's things in your heart that God's got to change and it don't happen overnight.
Well, we're going to get into some things next week, and I'll try and get this finished up on God and the work of our hands. I thank you, gentlemen, for coming. I hope I've been a blessing to you. That's my hope. That's my desire. That's my dream. That's my plan. Third John 2. I want to see your souls change. Because that's the horse. The card is health and wealth. The horse is your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's my banner. Third John 2. And that's what he said to me. So I, that's what I'm going to do in here. So he says something else. Thank you.